Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the last presentation before Easter that completes the Lenten Reflection series by Bishop Stephen Hero and I. I always find that when I come to Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week, I am faced with a sense of tension and dichotomy. What unfolds is the gift of God, meeting the tragedy and complexity of human longing coupled with human failing. The great Western philosopher Bertrand Russell, an atheist, stated, the problem with Christianity is not that it wasn't a good religion that inspired humanity to live well, but that what it proposed was impossible for man to realize. Many would say that Russell was right, but now we watch the man and the journey of Jesus Christ because the vision is only possible to realize with help, God's help. Jesus Christ shows us the way. This week, we watch and honor that unique path with intrigue, sometimes confusion, even horror, and then to the Easter event. The history that we all know so well that goes all the way back to creation when sin entered the world and then through the great Exodus story when God delivered the people from slavery is a history and story of God's great efforts to save his people. And yet we still fell to that evil that has always stopped us up, made us fall short. In Viktor Frankl's famous work, Man's Search for Meaning, one of his quotes about suffering and meaning is as follows. What is to give light must endure burning. We begin Holy Week having experienced this past year the call to be light, but also to endure burning. Indeed, we have even been consumed. <laughs> the challenges, the tensions and conflicts, the polarizations we have all experienced in our world and country, our communities, even our families, have been very challenging and seemingly quite uncharacteristic of what we would call an, an acceptable normal. And yet, the feature of tension has always been with the church. It is a key feature of the gospel, and it comes to an apex this week, Holy Week, when our Lord Jesus Christ gives the unexpected, ultimate, and final confrontation between light and darkness, death and life, abundant life to the full. What we recall and witness again in the way of Jesus Christ is utterly amazing, astonishing, unbelievable. St. Paul, in today's second reading to the Philippians, sums up the unique response of Jesus Christ, who uniquely goes the wonderful, terrible path. Firstly, he was in the form of God. He was God. Secondly, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, taken advantage of. Thirdly, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Who has ever done this? Especially when they had the unique ability to avoid or overcome. Fourthly, he was obedient to the Father's plan to heal, redeem, and save the world all the way to the point of death, death on a cross. This is absurd. <laughs> no one with such status and ability, has ever done this. This is why God exalted him. This is why every knee should bend, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Pope Francis once said about this event, there are many people who admire Jesus. He said beautiful things. He was filled with love and forgiveness. His example changed history and so on. They admire him, but their lives are not changed. To admire Jesus is not enough. We have to follow in his footsteps, to let ourselves be challenged by him, to pass from admiration to amazement. What is most amazing about the Lord and his Passover? It is the fact that he achieves glory through humiliation. He triumphs by accepting suffering and death, 
things that we, in our quest for admiration and success, would avoid. Jesus did it for us to plumb the depths of our human experience, our entire existence, all our evil. The Pope concluded that the celebration of the passion of our Lord needs to move us from distant admiration of Jesus Christ to amazement at Jesus who demonstrates the greatest love the world has known on the cross. Our salvation and new life passes through the wood of the cross. Because of this greatest way of love the world has known, we can now say, when we face the sun, now all shadows will be behind us. So this is called Holy Week because this is the time of the church year when destruction meets new life, hell meets heaven, and death meets resurrection. Let us ask ourselves, why did Jesus die on the cross for us? Why did humanity crucify Christ? Do we still crucify Christ? If so, what does Christ show us as a new way? <laughs> These are questions that must be faced and asked. Don't rush the answer. Sometimes that is the problem. Let us ask the question and then stay in the eerie, mysterious silence of the response of Jesus Christ. A blessed Holy Week and upcoming Easter season to you all. <laughs>